This is Monster Hunter World, an action role-playing game by Capcom that first came out in 2018, followed by a PC version in August of that same year, uh, directed by Yuya Tokuda, and the Iceborne DLC, which is basically a whole another half of a game, came out in 2020. This is the Monster Hunter game that really took it to the mainstream and really got them to the big time. There's been many, many, many games uh, that have come out, mostly set in Japan, and then eventually they've started to get popular overseas and they localized them, uh, such as Monster Hunter Portable, um, Generations on 3DS, on PSP, not many consoles, and PC for the first time was this game. And the game basically relates to you being a monster hunter and um, you're coming to a new island, you're setting up a village and you're trying to find out what's going on. And it follows the story of Zora Magdaros, a massive skyscraper sized uh, creature you're hunting and it leads you into seeing all sorts of other creatures like Sonogre right here and you try to find out the mystery of the island visit five six locations uh, such as the core highlands the um, core frost reach all sorts of places with their own ecologies uh, endemic life which would be the little creatures there be it the game's form of butterflies or penguins on a map you know they're slightly different and you can capture them use them to decorate your home or even use them as a bomb sometimes if it's a, a nitro bug, they can explode and help your creatures. And each area has its own secrets. You can mine in them, you can hunt creatures, um, and so forth. So there's plenty to do on the maps themselves, such as expeditions and just exploring, getting the materials you need from low rank to high rank to master rank that you unlock as you go to, through the main story. The first part of the story you go from low to high rank and the DLC unlocks master rank and all the armors themselves look different as you move from low to master even though it's the same creatures they get stronger they get new moves and you do unlock new creatures and different creatures like this right here is a master rank creature you don't see in low rank as opposed to an ninja which you see in low rank and then eventually the monsters have different um, specialties basically as there's different types and I believe the monster count is close to 60 maybe a couple over 60 and it can they've the game's been supported so well by Capcom with free updates tie-ins with the other properties such as Devil May Cry, uh, Dante outfit, uh, Mega Man outfit for your palico which is your cat companion that's with you um, all the time if you're in solo and if you're another person you have your cat companion and their cat companion, but if you go up to three or four people, which you can do either by setting up a room in the gathering hub or by yourself, you lose the palicos, but you have your teammates to help you, but the creatures do get harder to fight. The, the armors of the game are very diverse. There's unique armors for every single uh, monster you hunt, uh, be it Do Dodogama. Uh, Fatalis, Zephy Chiva, uh, Great Jaguars, all, all sorts of creatures, Alateron, like you see on screen right now. And there's sets, basically Alpha and Betas. And each armor has its own stats in terms of numbers. Um, and elemental effects, some of them are more resistant to fire, for example, or ice. And then they have abilities like making your dodge a little bit longer or giving you a little bit more health or intimidator that makes the monster attack you and it's useful in certain settings and can help um, rage the monster and for each monster you can break the parts like you see here I'm attacking the tail I'm trying to break the horns for him specifically but you can also use your clutch claw which is a, a weapon on your arm to latch onto them which is uh, I guess a flagship feature for this game and it allows you to break specific parts for the monster or crash into the wall to try and get that advantage you know and you're also allowed to ride monsters if you're more of an airborne type character you get in the air where you jump off a cliff and you hit them you have 
a couple of chances per match to ride the monster and damage it. Along with having random events like other monsters coming in and affecting your fight. It'd be a, you let them fight and just watch them. Or you can join it. It could be a 3v3 or a 4v4 if you're lucky. And so forth. And quick shout out in this video. I have Jack helping me from the Monster Hunter Discord. And I'll have a link in the description for that if you want to get into it. But you're a little afraid. There's plenty of people on there that can help you with Monster Hunter World on PC, Xbox, or PlayStation. Uh, they're nice and friendly, and they really helped me out get into the game. And they even have guys on there that Jack himself has made. And he's one of the greatest players I've ever played with, so just props to him for helping me out, for being in the video, doing all that. Um, and moving on to the actual combat, the weapons. There's 14 different weapons in this. The 14 weapons of Monster Hunter, from combo to combo. So it's pretty nice. Uh, there's bow and light bow gun, all those. I haven't really used all of them to... Um, the extent of mastery, but they're all viable, they all have many, 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 many weapons based on every creature, they're all perfectly balanced, just about, and they all require different amounts of work to learn them, which is tough, but it allows you to have a great degree of mastery as you try to learn them and become great at them. And each weapon has its own stats of dealing raw damage which can be cutting and blunt for most weapons, and then the ammo type weapons like light bow gun. And it has its own types, and then some weapons, depending on the monster you kill, such as no go. So, other than combat, the rest of your time will be spent at the village, and there's three villages, two of which I see as the main ones. Uh, the village in Astera, and the Celiana village will be the main two where you can talk to the vendor and buy potions and such. If you don't want to make them, you can talk to a uh, botanist and they can actually, um, you know, grow plants for you so you can get different materials to make herbs or honey to upgrade that, you know, get all sorts of things. You have the armor to upgrade your weapons, your charms, your pendants and all that. And you have, in the first area, three homes that if you go throughout the store, you can upgrade from the first to the second to the third home, and they get nicer. And in Celiana, you have your own fully customizable room, where for record player, you can play all the music from the game. You can change your bed sheets, change the floor, change the lighting, and you can even have endemic life creatures you've caught hang out in your room and liven the place up. And you also have um, mini game modes you can play. There, you can play with the pig, you can do arm wrestling with someone, uh, you can hang in the sauna. There's so much to do every now and then. There's special events, and the game will let you know that while you're there. The Oxy comes to the port, which is a ship you can buy uh, materials from if you need them. And you can even send out your Palicos, which is your, your cat friend. You can send out his buddies on missions so they can get you materials. And I haven't even spoken about the Palico, but he's... The cat that's always with you, and you can customize this armor and weapons just like you can with your own to a great extent. And there's different armors for each and every creature. So you can give the Palico weapons, or uh, in addition to that, gadgets. And the gadgets go from the Vigor Wasp spray, which means every now and then he'll set a Vigor Wasp on the ground, which you can use to heal yourself, or he'll fly to you with it as he gets better. Eventually, he can even bring you back to life if you fell a mission. If you uh, die, if you die three times, it takes you back to camp for each death. And once you hit three, you're done. You go to the main camp. And he can save you from one of those if you have that. It goes up all the way to level 15. Next one is the Fire Flash Cage, where he can use a uh, flash fly to blind the monsters for a little bit. And he might set a shock trap. Next one be the shield uh, spire, which is a giant shield he can use to taunt the monster and get it aggro and, you know, for a tough fight like a Diablo, get it off of you. The next one is the core orchestra, which is a bit like the hunting horn, where he can boost your attack, defense, and your resistances. And he can even get a drum at level 10. The next one's the plunder blade, which is really good at getting loot from some, certain monsters to some of the loot at master rank might have a 1-5% to 5 chance to get it, and you need that specific item 
um, to build the equipment you need. Next one is the Molotov cocktail. And you can get all of these from talking to the cats on each map and helping them out. In some situations, it might need help with a monster, someone might be lost, and you have to take them back to the camp. You first find the secret hidden camp, you do something for them, and then it unlocks them. Eventually, they give you the equipment, and they even help you out in the areas by setting up traps and doing stuff like that, you know? Food itself and while uh, it looks camp, scrumptious. It's, it's going to make you hungry if you haven't eaten. It looks amazing. Uh, different... Cats cook them at different villages, so at Celiana it's the old granny cat, and at Astera is the buff Meowster chief cat. And you can tell they're cooking, and the cat's helping them, they have personality, food looks amazing, uh, it's all really a good time, it's all fun. And it also gives you a bonus for your health and your stamina would be the main two of, of max to plus 50 for both. Along with depending on what food item you get and what ingredients you've unlocked, you can make your own items or just go with what they have and it can up your dodge speed or help with damage or damage resistance or things like that. And there's plenty of things to do in the town um, that don't have much to do with the actual monster fighting. That's just the resource center where you have bounties you can uh, go into to try and get bonus items uh, reset weekly. Uh, investigations to get rare items from monsters kind of like quests and then you can complete deliveries and these actually unlock camps once you find them on the different maps you get one automatically and then some camps you get up to three more some might just be one or two more and you can unlock mantles that can help protect your battle like ice proof mantle protects you from ice and um, so forth this is the Research Elder, and he's at both camps, and all of these you can find at both camps. It just shows you the research levels as you investigate uh, monster footprints or dung and so forth. And you fight the monster, you learn more about them. Uh, it has cute little pictures of them. It shows you the weaknesses, uh, what they're weak to, and where to hit them. And it's really informative that way you don't have to memorize everything yourself, or you could get an app, or you could just roleplay it use what they got here for you you know it's all good uh, keep pictures of the monsters they definitely don't look like this in game they look a lot scarier and um, hostile so I appreciate all the effort they put here knowing that people could just look it up some people don't want to do that you know they're just earn it and this is one good way to fulfill those people that are more for the quarter you know So you see the monsters here, and the variants for each kind, and um, you know you can just go through them, see all the types. Next up, we're going to talk about one of the mini games, um, Steamworks. That's going to be up here to the left. This is just the crew that you meet throughout the story. I'm not really going to spoil the story. Um, normally, it doesn't really have a big story as far as Monster Hunter, but this time that you can tell they really tried to put in effort. Normally, it just has cutscenes. It's that cutscene, story, dialogue, and so forth. That's the Steamworks, where it's a little mini game. We kind of have to randomly hit buttons to, you know, get materials. It's pretty useful. Um, and here is the house. We have your housekeeper on the outside, and you have a housekeeper inside to kind of make it your abode, to make it yours, to customize it more than the house you have in Astera. Uh, you have the music player, you can play all sorts of music from the game, which is amazing. Um, I'm going to play you one right here.
the music, as you just heard, is phenomenal. One of the best soundtracks in gaming out there with Dark Souls 3, which just sets the mood for everything and takes it a step above some of the soundtracks or for you whenever you win, finish the quest, it makes you feel like a hero, it makes you feel like you're special, it fills you full of hope, like you, you can change the world, what you're fighting for is right, you know, you're trying to protect the environment, your village, your people, you're not trying to kill all the monsters, you're trying to keep everything stable, uh, like an ecosystem. And some of the songs, like the Devil Joe music, you, it gives you goosebumps, you know you're in trouble, it's going to be the fight for your life. And, you know, all the songs kind of become iconic. When it starts, you know that monster's about to appear, or they just showed up, trouble's about to start, and you're ready for the, you know, the fight of your life. Um, and then after you mess with the music player, you can play music while you're there. Uh, you can mess with the actual, the lighting, the curtains, the, the flooring. Uh, you can even let your pets out. Uh, you, here you're able to send out a tail rider safari of palicos that you never meet and they go out and they bring you back materials and you can do this every once in a while. And here we are setting up pets. The cactar from Final Fantasy, those crossover right there because they're all Capcom. And they, you know, allow them to use the license with this property, which is great. Um, you see my palico right there dressed as a dragon with his horn. You see my equipment there. And yeah, you can have free reign to make it yours and personalize it. And if you're playing with people, they can come, you know, see you, come hang out, come play in the hot springs. The next and area so that we're about to head to is the gathering hub, which you can also hang out with other players and, you know, see each other's outfits, palicos, how much people customize their characters or didn't. And it has its own set of vendors, so you don't have to leave there if you don't want to. It's got provisions vendors, so you can buy potions, um, mega demon drugs, all that to kind of help out your character. It has the uh, events character you can talk to for specific events, because there is an event schedule um, from now on for a set for every year. We're not coming out with any more new ones, but there's plenty for them to rotate from. Christmas events to Halloween events and other holidays um, and you can just see it's a beautiful area they really did amazing here just give you an area you can just hang out take the sights in or you can you know eat with your palico see the different vendors and it's connected to the rest of the building too quest counter arena counter you can hang out in the bath with your friends your palico, uh, do whatever you gotta do, and this is the first game where you can kind of hang out with your friends, and the other games you can't even go from area to area without a loading screen, and this one's seamless, and I think they're going to be like that from now on, I know Rise is like that, the new game coming out on Switch, and then you can see the areas are connected, you can go to the armory, there's a steam bath here where it's its own mini game, that's pretty, you know, fun, pretty decent. Um, and you can just see how much detail they went to. They really didn't have to do all this. And they went up and beyond. You can sit, just stare up to the sunset, and just enjoy. You can see the waves crashing, the hot springs, the, the clouds and sunlight. That's just beautiful. It's almost photorealistic the way they get that. And I commend them for all this effort. Next up, we're going to look at the map and all the different uh, locales we can head to because they give us plenty to deal with. Uh, we have the three main bases, that's the area research base in Celiana. And then we have the actual six different areas we can go to along with the guiding lands, which is a mixture of all the rest of them. And we're about to head that way. It's the only time you see a loading screen, but as you see, they have tips you can go through and they cycle out by themselves, but they're pretty basic, no special animation. This is the ancient forest, and I'm going to show you a little bit of each area just so you can get a little rundown. And they each have their own weather systems, which right here we caught it at a good time. It's stormy, it's cloudy, 
Uh, it's very moody. I like it. I like the rain. Uh, you can see me getting tracks, which is how you track the monsters, which is the first game to have this. The other ones, you had to find them on a map and paintball them in order to find them. Here, it automatically kind of finds them for you as long as you have the tracks or you've researched them enough. Here is another mini game that I'm not very good at is the fishing one that you see here and uh, I'll just let you see how bad this went it took me a minute to kind of find it and then get pulling it too early it was just a complete mess And if you listen closely, uh, behind my pathetic attempts at fishing, you can hear uh, stomps, footsteps, and that's a monster. And they all have different, you know, footsteps to kind of let you key in as to what it is, or if they're flying, you hear the wings overhead. And in a little bit, I turn around, and I see them, and then I track them through the forest and show some more of the locale, how much detail they put into the flowers, the plants, and um, you can pick fruit, you can... Pull out your pickaxe and mine are rocky outcroppings. You can pick up rocks to sling them on your clutch claw. Um, you can dig through bones, and depending on what rank uh, map you are, whether it's low rank, high, or master rank, the materials are going to be different, and they're going to be a lot better on master rank than for low rank at the same exact spots. And here's a nice view of the ocean, the forest. All these maps do a good job of having a sense of skill as you move up and down the map and there's different levels you can fight from be it a small little outcrop and you can jump off of and do a special move or much less just different areas. The higher you the deeper you go into the forest, the higher you go. And you're in the top where there is the raft flows nest and there's different uh, ecosystems and it kinda makes sense as to where the monsters normally live. The weaker lower ones, normal lower like the jaguars, and the higher you go, you see dragons. This is only a weird location for this dragon to be, but you know, he's resting. That's a Kshela Darora, a wind dragon, uh, just hanging out. So I kind of stuck by him, and here you see the palicos that can help you if I were to ride that dragon. And there's some endemic life you can catch. And then the second, I'm going to. Uh, trigger the dragon to be in hostile just to show some combat and how he fights and all the creatures fight differently he's less physical and uses more his wind attacks as a special like tornadoes to push you away to you know instead of chomping as much he doesn't have fire like Rathlos he doesn't have lightning like Snogger or things like that This area is the Wild Spire Waste, which is more the desert area. Uh, you see plenty of life here. Uh, it's actually not too much of a waste. There's plenty of water, but it's very diverse. You see to the left, there's a swamp. That's uh, Van Barros. And if I were to hunt him, you know, I get different uh, items from his uh, raw materials that I can make for armor or weapons for me, or my palico, and so forth. And I'm just going to show you some of the environment here and the different diverse creatures that can be in this area. Such as the uh, hostile human coast up here. And then I will show you the galvanist at the very top. And up here is everyone's favorite Cornotaurus based dinosaur. Uh, Galvanus, who is a very, very good fight, and here you can see the the pit next to me can actually be crushed, and some of the environments can change like that, and you fall underneath. This next part, we're going to go through the different armors for Master Rank, and from low rank to high to Master, 
you have a different look for each of the armors, and the higher you go throughout the ranks, the more monsters you unlock, because they're not all available at low rank. And the master rank armors are a lot better than the lower rank ones. In addition to each armor, each piece needs certain raw materials to create, whether that's a crystal or a fancy beak from the certain monster in order to create it. And then after that, you can even upgrade them depending on what spears you have at the armory. And here I'm going to show you all the different uh, designs of the armors, how unique they are, how much they reflect the monster. And basically their culture built around them and the monster and how unique they each are. And you can really tell it's not generic, it's not copy and paste, uh, except for some of the bone weapons, unfortunately. But they're very unique. There's a history to this throughout all the games that you can see in the armors. And even the new ones, you can still sense a sense of history in the in-game universe. And here we're going to the high rank armors, which are a step below the master rank ones, but still decent in how they look a little different. And you can go as far as customizing the color or mixing and matching. You don't have to wear the whole armor set. I'm just showing you how it looks. Some people play for the fashion. They like to design the monster hunter, create the character, and you can go back and edit your character as well as you know change the armors. And there's even a thing called layered armor that lets you change any armor to look like any other armor. And these are the charms. You can wear one at a time. And they can do any number of things. Um, and then the four armor sets are kind of like the, the jokey ones from other Capcom properties like Street Fighter. And I believe your Palico, I have one for Mega Man because they own Mega Man. And this is the layered armor. So basically you can be wearing one armor like the Faith Talus armor and make it look like any other armor if you want stats but you want it to look fashionable. If you want to mix and match you can do that as well. Uh, and then you can upgrade your armor and your weapons to the max depending on what materials you have and there's a couple of different upgrade trees. Right here you can upgrade the weapon itself and change the look and the effects it has. And that's for every weapon, all 14 types. And it has many weapons based on every monster. And along with that you have the uh, spears you can use to upgrade armors. And it doesn't change the look but it just makes it stronger. So, and then you can even go one step further, and it gets super complex. You can upgrade the attack, the infinity, the defense, the, all of that for augmentations. And here is your Palico armor. And this is some of the best armor in the game, some of the best armor in the series. Because you want your buddy fighting with you to look his best and be protected and be able to help you. And here you can see how the armor still reflects the armor of the hunter wears and then the monster in different ways to see all the cute ways they design him and give him a unique look all these different ones and so for those wondering you customize your palico as well when you start the game and you can change the eye color change what they look the pattern on them their ear type and so forth and along with customizing the style of play they have and you go even further with customize what they wear, like the uh, dancer from Dark Souls armor here, or you know the rest of these armors you have that look exquisite, or the fancy uh, new Dota armor we have here, or the different inspirations you can see from all of these classic Fatalis, Snogger, and you can just see the, the power in it, the reflection of the monster, its pride, no gigante. And there's even some jokey sets near the end that, you know, you could have your palico wear. And just like with the, the human armor, you have to get the materials to make it. In the older games, the materials would leave scraps, and you could use scraps, but here you actually have to fight the monster even further to get the materials necessary to create these armors for your palico. Here are some of the jerk ones. Now getting back to the combat, here's me and Jack fighting a Snogger, where you can really hear and feel the strength of the creature, of this wolf, the sound design, uh, going with his, you know, jumping around, fighting, threading, all of that. You can see the lightning bugs off his back, all the details they put into it, 
And you can see me wearing some poor mantor, so you kind of see how it's all coming together. As I hop around and attack him, Jack's doing his thing, and I'm using ice against this lightning. So you kind of see how the swamp parts coming together. You're trying to dodge, hit him, get your hits in, dodge, and there's no health bar like any other game. So that's just part of the charm. You have to be able to tell based off the way the monster is acting. Parts will break off, like his horns might break off, or pieces of his uh, his armor plates. He'll start limping, he'll start running away a couple of times. And for most monsters, you can put them to sleep and capture them. And you get even more materials in this game. Or you could just finish them off like normal, it's up to you. And you can't do that to every monster. Um, here you see that I've mounted him so you kind of see how the mechanic works. Uh, it's kind of random, but the more you're jumping around attacking in the air, the more likely you can mount. He can pretty much run up him up and down or hold on while he's going crazy and then get Y and through your trigger you hit him with the weapon and then you pretty much stagger them and they lean over on the side you try to get as many hits as you can depending on your weapon and all that and uh, you can kind of hear the music as well the little rock going back and forth and how it builds up and kind of goes with it he's getting injured so he's running away and here me and Jack are trying to chase him and hunt them down because they really don't leave the map unless the timer runs out. For most quests you get 50 minutes. For some of the investigation quests they're tougher so you only get 20 minutes. So it kind of depends on what you're going for. Uh, normally they just go from area to area until they go to their final hiding place where they sleep and that's where you can capture them or you just defeat them straight up. Here you see me fighting the Alatreon and it's showing off a multiplayer component of it. Or you can either do an SOS while you're in the mission and call for people to come in and help you. Uh, or you can do a party like me and Jack do and we start our session, pretty much a lobby, and we go into the game together up to four people. This SOS, I have one guy, but as we're fighting more and more can come. It's kind of tough for this fight because he has the insta kill that takes out everyone and takes away all your lives, but you know, that's just the reality of it. And you kind of see how uh, Tran is a lot more physical, a lot more intimidating. How the music sets him up, and you can tell how he's different than uh, Snogger or Shola Dora or any other monster we've seen. There's there's heft to it. There's you know something different about it. He's quick. He flies around. He uses fire at you. He uh, changes elements to ice, and he's the only one that does this. And. It's a special case as well that you have to take out his horns. Some of them have special cases like that where you have to aim for a certain guard part, this one especially, in order to defeat them. Here I just want you to listen to the sound sign and how much credit the sound you should get. You can hear the fire in the background, the music, the monster, the way they create it and make it sound like a genuine beast is insane. And every monster has its level of polish and care about the environments. And just listen to So see, there are a wide range of creature designs, character designs, armor designs, weapon designs, all going into it. The uh, storyboard and the handler, the woman who gives you all your quests, an extension of the storyboard, um, helps in giving the player agency throughout the story and pushing them to do things and kind of speaking for the player as the player doesn't really have a voice beyond grunting or sign and all that. So anytime 
the Guardians Agency to be pushed into the story, whether it's getting in trouble or having to save her, or her speaking for us, she does that uh, for us in the story. And as we meet characters, we get to see who they are, what their personalities are, and it's nothing super in-depth, like a, a game like Nier or anything like that, but they have their own personality. It's uh, mostly voice acted, sometimes you have dialogue you just read, but they did pretty good with cutscenes, um, having dialogue, and, you know, fun creating a story based on these monsters and how they interact with the environment, and how we interact with them throughout the story. And the monster creations are amazing. Uh, they're, some of them are almost like ecological Godzillas, where they spread trouble everywhere they go, they create issues and have to be dealt with. Some of them um, have symbiotic relationships with the environment, like Brachydeos. He has uh, a parasitic fungus on him. With his saliva, it activates and creates explosions. Or well, with Snoker, he gets his lightning because he's in a symbiotic relationship with the bugs on him. So. And at a certain point, you get so good at the game, you kind of start to wonder uh, if you're the real monster because you're destroying them so quickly, efficiently. Uh, you get 50 minutes to complete the mission, and you're you're destroying them in eight minutes, especially on the lower ranks, which are the ones where it's a tutorial for you to get secrets for controls, the weapons, the monsters go from village to village, understand who you have to talk to for what in order to continue the story or in order to upgrade one of your mini things to give you that you can upgrade and basically the point of the game is to it's what you make it it's, for some people it's to get better become great to hit master rank 999 which uh, I'm sure there aren't many people that's hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of hours grinding the challenge aspect of challenging yourself creating the best gear, the best gear sets and having the different um, armors and uh, charms and all that work in unison to be overpowered as possible or just you know defeating creatures that you couldn't before and you're learning them you know when to dodge, when to do what or just socializing with friends or strangers and making new friends and seeing how people have different fighting styles with different weapons and you know how they deal with different things so there's always room for improvement there's hundreds of things to do beyond fighting monsters, like fishing, upgrading gear, just hanging out with friends, you know, in the hot bath, customizing your house, uh, seeing how the creatures and systems interact. Like right here, the uh, galvanist got ambushed by Diablos, and it, you know, made the pitfall fall. So there's all sorts of systems like this. Some of them are hidden, some of them aren't. And you can see how everything interacts with the player, with the monsters. You can choose to be a part of it, or you can choose not to. So, hopefully you guys try out the game, give it a chance. This is a 2020 review of it. It's only been less than a year since the DLC, and less than two years since the full game came out. And Monster Hunter Rise is coming out in March as of right now. And hopefully that game is half as good as this, half as full of content, but knowing the team it's working on it, it's going to be amazing, and the demo that came out for that was pretty amazing too. So, thank you for the views, uh, please give me feedback in the comments, I worked really hard on this, this is my second video, I tried to make it a full review, I'm going to try and go back and finish Everspace 2 and make a review for that, and if you have any games you want me to review, just leave it in the comments, if not, I'll pick something that I'm pretty passionate about. I'll try and get a review out for you guys. And if you prefer longer videos like this, where it's 30, 40 minutes an hour, like the big uh, gaming retrospective channels, this is what I enjoy doing. Let me know if you want to be shorter, like 10 minutes, like a impressions, or like a 10, 20 minute review, let me know as well, and I can try to work it out. And, you know, just give me feedback. I really enjoy doing this, and thank you for your time.